So is AI just a shortcut for amateurs or a legitimate threat to the future of 3D art? Let's dive into this clash of creative technologies and explore whether AI is disrupting or enhancing the world of digital artistry. But let's first have a look onto the website of Runway and see what we got there. And overall, I have to say, this is not a very cheap thing. And I started with the cheapest one. Well, first of all, you have a free one, which I think you can create like three or four videos. Uh, yeah, it's three video projects. So that's gone after a second. Then I started with the $15 tiers, which went after 20 minutes or something like this. So I had to go with the unlimited plan. It's very expensive, so I'll do this only for one month. But I thought, yeah, cool, now I have this super plan and I can just prompt the hell out of it. But mostly you're quite limited. You can always only prompt two images at the same time. You need to go onto the runway homepage where you, for example, can check your own assets. You can watch some other films from other artists. And here are all the videos which you created. But let's create a new one. So go to home, get started. And now we need to upload an image. I will quickly show you a few examples because you can see I've tried something out and not much worked so we can start to create an image now but the current problem is that runway only allows you to produce the 60x9 image and obviously it's quite nice to get a 4x5 or 9x16 video for your social media there's a crappy hack around it so i opened many images and i just turned them 90 degrees and then after the simulation i turned them back on in DaVinci. But yeah, I created a few different images here and I wanted to see where Runway is really shining and where it's not working at all. And let's start with this image. In this case, I want to go even with 16 by nine, so no image rotation needs to be done. And on the left, you can see I did many examples and I produce many crappy images. I figured out that you kind of have to do something which is related to the reality. So things work way better if the training data is big. For example, like hair. The AI obviously knows how hair looks. So in my test, hair was one of the best examples. But also the simulation and VFX stuff works pretty well. So like melting, like honey, like glue or wax or things like this. And overall, I have to say it worked better when the input image was relatively easy to understand and then runway worked way better this melting effect again is pretty cool and it would be very difficult to do this in 3d then some of the renderings i would say they're pretty close to what i actually simulated in cinema 4d and this is a nice example here nothing is happening but the rotation looks pretty realistic, could have been a rendering. Then what I have to say, sometimes I create things which are inspiring me. So this quality of the rendering is not good enough. It's way too blurry and everything. But I try to play around with animals as I thought the training data for small bugs is quite high. So that should work very well. And indeed it did. Yeah, but again to my recent tests. So this didn't work at all. And I also made a test between two models. And talking about the model, let's jump back onto the runway website. So where I loaded my image on the left. And again, hair works very well. You can now choose on the top left between the different models which you want. You can go with tr Gen 3 Alpha or Gen 3 Alpha Turbo. And the Turbo is new. And it's really cool because it's way faster. So let's just prompt this image twice because you are only allowed to do two at the same time. So these two are in queue and estimately I think I have to wait four to five minutes to get the rendering of these two shots. So it's not very iterative and you have to wait long. And regarding the price tag of $90, that's meh, not so cool. But the model is ask me there's a high demand switch to models and I tried that. So we have to wait a little bit till these two are done and then we can switch the model. So let's go for Gen 3 Alpha. And in my experience, Gen 3 Alpha is a bit more blurry than the, um, I mean, the Turbo one is more blurry than the real one. And let me get you an example. Um, I also think I have the feeling that the, it feels too sharp with the Turbo one. These are all Turbo ones for another example, but nearly none of them worked out or none of them were cool some liquid melting effect was all right not too bad but yeah camera motion is terrible and this is doing nothing just wiggling around but the gen 3 alpha turbo is way faster and 
some more examples here of an object is melting like butter, no camera motion. Meh, not really. Water droplets are moving on the object, no camera motion. Go to Toro and actually let's generate the same prompt here. So hair is blowing in the wind, no camera motion, high detail. Now you can compare two Turbo to two Alpha ones. So here is an Alpha one without a prompt, so that's boring. Then I have also only Alpha and hair growth out of the center, no camera motion, but nothing's happening. Again, the hair growing didn't do anything and I had to come up with some other things, even though the rotation motion is quite cool, I have to say. So this is could be nearly a rendering. Hair is blowing in the wind. This was the trick for me, which which like helped me to find the right prompt. So we have the right amount of motion and yeah, this looks super nice. And these are the... This was the Alpha one and this is the Toru one. With the Toru one, as I said, it feels too soft and glitchy but as i said it's way faster another example looks nice but too blurry and this is the alpha without turbo and i think this looks more crisp but for this one the motion was not enough for me yep this looks also super nice i really like it too little motion and also too little motion so i had to get rid of the slow motion part also a bit too slow it is nice we could even try to go with a subtle zoom in there are some presets down here for example you can add like this thing here then click on it and it says high detail slow motion shot a subject in motion or you can go for close-up portrait a crash zoom into a close-up portrait shallow depth of field bokeh in the style of describe the style in the style of let's keep it with muted colors and let's see what is happening if we are going for this prompt and then you can also just if you go for five or ten seconds and mostly go for five because it's anyway so slow so you can see my two um ones are still in the queue the alpha one and nothing happened but the turbo ones they both are already finished pretty cool pretty cool but too blurry also, perhaps this could be a nice inspiration for myself and try to recreate this in 3d so what really fascinates me about this technique is that I can take my own work, like the renderings which I previously did or which I'm currently doing, and I just can upload it into the cloud and see what the AI is spitting out. Sometimes it's already creating something super interesting and sometimes it's creating something which inspires myself and which might help me to develop further my rendering. And I'm now at the end of my hair experiment. But before I want to end this tutorial, let's quickly dive into Cinema 4D. And for everyone who's interested in doing 3D stuff, I still have my scene open here. And I have an emitter and a tracer and a field force. And I'm just emitting some particles and they're traced. And they're always trapped into this circle because of the field force. And then I'm converting this one and baking it. And I did this many times and in the object manager now I have this cool pile where I have a lot of different noises back together. For example, like this is one noise or this is one. And if I put them all together and render them in Redshift, this looks something like I did before. So it's not rendering, the new Cinema 4D doesn't let me because it failed to allocate necessary GPU. So you have just to think about it. But if you want to recreate this and learn how to do this, you can check out my Patreon and subscribe there and go to the search and search for hair. And it's been a while, but the tutorial is still up to date. So you can watch number eight animation Harry, and then you can recreate everything and use these hair rendering as a base for your runway experiments and some thoughts at the end. It's always good to know where we are currently in the development of technology, what is possible, what not. For my takeaway, I have to think, or I have to say, if AI will take away the boring simulation and the VFX part and all the particle things, that's really fine with me. I'm actually very happy about this. But for now, we're, I think, at 70%. So the image quality is obviously not that good. And it's just a gamble machine. So at this point, I really think you have to know 3D. You have to know the program to be able to do whatever you have in your mind without having to rely on this happy accident. But in the end, I'm also very interested what you think about this. So please let me know in the comments. And in the meantime, have a good time. Bye bye.